Today we're going to go over your project that we've been working towards. We've been doing the slab mask, we've been doing slab tiles, and now we're going to be doing more of the major project, which is going to be constructing a slab teapot. So I have rolled out slabs today that I've been drying for a couple hours. I've flipped this slab probably twice now. So it's getting closer to leather hard, but still soft enough to work, but it's going to hold its shape. I have also done my cutouts, my templates, for what the, the sides of the teapot, the bottom, and the part that goes over the top. Okay. And I'm using Bristol board, but you can use cardboard. Um, cereal box cardboard can work, or, but I've been use, I use thick stock paper. So anything that will work for your template. And I'm spraying them and, and sticking them to the clay. So it marks where I need to cut out. And then I couldn't fit all the parts on this one slab, so I have a smaller slab that I'll do the bottom on. The next step is doing all the cutouts. So you want to just cut around your templates. Save the extra little pieces because you can use them for sculpting or adding for your sprigging on your pieces. But smaller pieces you can always smash and put back into your bag. And the, the thicker paper acts like an exo exoskeleton. So it helps keep the shape straight. We've been talking about how slabs like to curl up on you. So I use the paper as an exoskeleton like you see on the outside of a bug is to give that strength. It's a hard shell. Later on I'll peel the paper. So, so I just cut each of the sections I need, then it's all putting it together. The other thing is once you flip it onto the paper side, um, the paper will stay there a lot easier in case it tries to peel off as it dries, especially if you're working outside. I'll put these in the front for now. And then the trickier part, curves. So. Um, remember the concept is an idiom or a story based teapot, but all I'm doing right now with this video demo is the basic construction of a curved body of a teapot with hard edges. Now you can do different shapes. If you work with soft slabs, of course, you can make a rounded form a lot more and we'll talk about that in class. But today I'm doing a more of a, a mixture of curved and hard form teapot. So there's flat parts and curved parts. And actually when I do this and I'm double checking the templates on technically on the wrong side but that's not a big deal because I'll probably peel it I normally peel off the template off the last part. So now um, what I've gotten is a board to put the base on and I'm going to start cutting and putting everything together. I also have grabbed a, one of our paddles because I'm going to paddle things together for more reinforced and more strength, especially when it's hard slabs versus soft slabs for construction. Um, so I'm cutting bevels. I'm using the edge of the table and using my fiddle line knife and I'm cutting 45 degree angles. And I, so you can see that it's a bevel. So when I bev attach it to the bottom that locks it into together rather than flat on flat. It's a lot stronger. Just like when you did your coil slab construction. I wanted to show this on video because it's a curve. So what I'm going to do is take my fiddling knife, hold it like I normally do by the notch, like a pencil, um, because I have more control. And then I'm turning the curve around the table to cut the bevel. And, and then you'll start noticing I'm saving the pieces and I'll explain in a little bit about reinforcing. So now that one's cut just like this one. So they both now have their bevels. So now I have three of the, three of the pieces cut. Now I gotta do the top part. And again, I'm saving the pieces. And normally, I, just myself, I always cut the long pieces first. 
And sometimes they fall on the ground, and I don't worry about them if they do that until a little bit later, then I pick them up. So now that all four parts are beveled, now everything from here is back to the usual that we've been doing. So it's slipping and scoring. So this, the bottom's already been scored. So now I'm going to take this piece, and because I have the paper on it, and it's already been drying for a little while, it is holding its shape now. It's getting close to leather hard. So, put my slip in. Like normal, I'm hearing that popping sound as the slip's going into the cracks. Then I'm going to turn this this way so you can see. I'm going to push this in the base and in the wall into each other really hard. And you'll see that the slip is squirting out like I've been telling you. When we do our sprigging, it's very similar. You want to see a little bit of slip spit come out. Then I'm going to paint a little bit of slip here, and I'm going to reinforce that. So these bevels that I was cutting, I'm not going to worry about slipping and scoring this part because this part's still wet. And I'm going to use this as a reinforcing joiner inside the, the teapot. And I'm using my hand pressure to push it on there so it doesn't come loose. So there's one side of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Same thing. Put my slip on and then push that edge in. And at this point in case you're curious about additional things that you can make with this technique. Right now, I made what I always tell students. If you ever need to make um, a, a sculptural object to hold your mail or um, napkins, you got this slotted piece of clay that you could make a napkin holder one day if you really want to. Then, then you would learn if it can stay standing in the firing or not. Then you'll know even more about your timing of slabs. Now I do these reinforcing bevels only in the spots I can reach. When I put the top on I can't reinforce that. So, But I've reinforced the bottom. So it's a lot harder for it to pop apart. Now we're going to take the bigger piece and it's going to loop itself all the way over. And this is going to be the top. So again, scoring like normal. And once in a while, this piece might be too long or too short. Uh, sometimes they're too short. Just add another slab to fill that in. Or change it to become, if there's an empty spot, I usually use that for the spout area. Or the handle area. If it's too long, you just cut it down. Just like, because you're, again, you're making your own puzzle piece. So, okay. so, so now, I'm going to go ahead and put slip on the other parts I've already scored. Then I'm going to take, push the first edge, and at this point I start adjusting the sides to make sure that they're not too wide as I go, or too, too enclosed. Then I'll start tapping it together. And now I'm going to use the paddle to pound these edges together. That'll strengthen, that'll strengthen the, the joints, the joiners of it. So I always think of constructing this way like when you construct with wood. It's almost the same type of mentality, um, like making a set of uh, drawers or a dresser. And then at this point, um, normally once I have this constructed to this level, I usually put them away overnight and then I'll do my more decorative elements. Um, right now, this is just the basic foundation of constructing with uh, slabs into making a complex form. So the body of the teapot, I'm going to go ahead and peel it. I'll peel these off. 
sometimes they leave a little paper, sometimes they don't. And then I'm just going to smooth out that edge a little bit. And at this point, you can also use, if you don't have this type of form, you can use a piece of wood to pound it too. Okay, so, so now I have all my little extra parts. So I'm going to take one of these pieces that are kind of more organic. So for a spout, and if, if I want to use this for water, I need, if you put one really big hole in it, the water's just going to spill out. Um, so I usually use my pin to make a couple holes, and that way, two or three of them, then the, it doesn't come out of the teapot as fast. Uh, but normally, remember, your slab teapot does not have to function. It, it's more of a decorative concept of a slab construction referencing the parts of a teapot. Now I'm taking this piece and I'm going to cut it into a trapezoid shape, so which means one side is shorter than the other with the edge that are triangles. Then I'm going to bevel them at opposite directions. Then I'm going to start curling it in my hands And this is going to become the spout to this teapot. Scoring like normal. And the reason I do that trapezoid shape is because then I get a tapered spout to a teapot rather than just a, a straight teapot spout. You'll see me put a tool in the, in the middle like this as I'm pushing it together so I don't seal it shut. And I use wooden dowels a lot at home for this. Then once I have what will be the spout of the teapot, um, then it's all about shaping it to match. So I'm going to pinch the bottom out a little bit more to flare it out and it also thins it out. Then I'm going to score around it. Slip like normal. I'm going to push there so I know, like you've seen me do in the video, this shows me where I need to score on my teapot. And you'll see that it wraps around the two holes I made to, because I'm going to go ahead and make this functional. Score this together, add a little bit more slip. Now later on I'll work on fixing this if I'm worried about it popping off um, when I open this up a little bit more. So you just want to push it on there. Remember this slab is already kind of stiff so you can just push it on there and then work the outer edge. Now later on I'll sculpt this. Um, you guys will probably see the example of it. I'll probably sculpt it this part, texture it or sculpt it. Now, I normally, for this shape and this type of spout, I'll make it look like a tree, uh, a chopped down tree, where it's the stump of a tree as part of the decoration. Okay, so that's on there. Okay. And the other thing to note, if you plan to put water in it, the tip of this teapot where it pours out is gonna dictate the height of the water in the container. So I can fill this up to here um, with water right now, and it's not going to come out of the edge. If this spout was pointed this way, straight down, then my water level would be a lot lower. If you, you put it lower on the body and put it straight, then you have even less water. Okay? So you got to think of where you're going to put the spout if it's going to be functional. Remember, for your concept of the slab teapot, it does not have to function. It just has to have the components of the teapot. Right now, we have the body and we have the spout. Next, I'm going to go ahead and make a strap handle. So I'm going to take another piece of this slab that I have leftovers of, and I'm going to cut an angle here and then curl it and this will become a slab handle 
that I'll put onto the piece. And you can cut this at different sizes to make it smaller or larger. It's, to, you know, remember reference of a handle. Um, since I'm demonstrating this, I'm going ahead and make it more functional. So I'm gonna make sure the handle's big enough so I can at least fit two fingers through it to pour out of. So I'm gonna score this together. Slip. You can also put these types of handles over the top and you might have seen teapot pictures like that too. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it to the side or on the back side of it. So like that. Again, marking where I need to score. Make sure I have enough gluing agent. And since the body of the teapot's stiff, I can push against it to make sure this handle's really on there. Uh, one thing that's been coming up this in the last two weeks is people have been talking about surface cracks on their clay. So this handle has a little bit of a surface crack. We'll see if we can get it on the video. You can see that's natural from the moisture coming off the surface. It's not a breaking crack. So I'm just going to put some slip on it and then smooth out those cracks. And that'll fix it. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to show you guys how to deal with a lid. I'm going to take this piece and cut it into a shape. That's going to be how I pick up the handle. So I'm going to add this. Again, marking where I need to score. I'm going to push this on there. And of course, when you start constructing your teapot, you'll take more time. I'm showing you mostly the basic construction aspects of building this way. So I'll push my needle tool in there to give it more of a frill. Now I, I'm going to take my needle tool and draw a rectangle around the, the handle. I'll show you this in just a second. Okay. So by drawing that, that's where I'm going to cut to free up the lid. I don't know if you've ever carved a jack-o-lantern, and if you've ever done the lid, if you cut a certain way, the lid falls in. So I have to cut at an angle. So I'm going to push the knife in at a 45, and then follow the line I made and free up the lid by cutting a bevel 45 just like this then I can take off the lid and you can see I'll, I'll fix those lines in a minute that the knife made but this will be the lid of the teapot. You can use the sculpting tool or I use the edge of the needle tool to fix my lines. So I'll go ahead and use the needle tool because that's what I usually use. And then I'll smooth out the edges so they're not sharp. Then I'll smooth out these edges a little bit more later. Right now this is a little too wet for that. And then to make sure the lid does not get stuck to the piece, whoops, I'll take a paper towel or a blue or the blue shop towel and I'll put this away like this. Okay. Now from here I can start adding my sprigging. So let's go ahead and give this teapot a little bit more character. Since I decided to go with like a chicken look with the top, might as well go all the way with the chicken look. So we're gonna give it some eyes and then I'll carve a line into that. So, but once you got the body and the construction of any of your teapot shapes, once you have the construction down, then it becomes just decoration and what you want it to look like. And so now I have my, some of my sculptural elements put in. I'm just gonna run my needle tool. Like that, to represent a beak. I'm probably going to add more clay down here to look like um, look like grass. So like the chickens hiding in the grass. Maybe cut some circles and make some eggs on one side. 
and then I'll turn this into more feathers and make it into a real caricature looking teapot. Okay, but that's the basics on how to start sculpting a slab constructed teapot.